Hello everybody, today we will try to learn the phase transformation and uh, the, uh, so far uh, based on the understanding on the Gibbs free energy, if there are different phases and this transformation occurs or maybe in case of specifically I am talking about the binary solution, what way the Gibbs free energy changes and uh, from there what way we can construct the uh, phase diagram. But before doing into the concept of the Gibbs free energy associated with the different phases and phase transformation, we try to understand that what are the different phase diagrams available and so far we have studied specifically in the engineering materials course. So, there are three different types of the phase diagram, one is the equilibrium phase diagram and definitely it is in case of the binary alloy system. Then time temperature transformation diagram which is usually called as TTT diagram and then continuous cooling transformation diagram CCT diagram. So, we know uh, all about uh, these different types of the phase transformation uh, this gra graphical representation of the different phase transformation their conditions. But what you can utilize the information of the different phase transformation diagram uh, to solve uh, on the practical problem. First is that equilibrium phase diagram. It is understood that in case of the binary alloy system equilibrium phase diagram is very much informative to understand the what are the different phases are there at different temperature and uh, this with respect to the composition what a the transformation temperatures from one phase to another phase changes. So, this all this information will be getting equilibrium phase diagram. Although this equilibrium phase diagram we normally get the information because uh, that different phases under equilibrium means we are assuming the infinitely long times the one phase is reaches from transformation occurs from one phase to another phases. So, uh, that means the it is a we, we can other we can say that it is a infinitely very slow process and then from there we are getting the uh, different phases present. This graph is basically represent the uh, one axis x axis in the form of a composition and y axis in the form of a temperature and what let us see what information we can get uh, uh, from this diagram. So, if we consider the most widely used the iron iron carbide phase diagram. So, four different single phases are there one is the gamma austenitic phase, alpha ferrite, beta assuming the cementite phase and delta ferrite phase. So, these are the four single phases, but anyway depending upon the solubility of the uh, the uh, composition uh, in a one, one matrix based on that different phases can present phase mixture may also be there. So, all kind of the information or, or maybe the important associated with any, any binary alloy system we can get. But in this case we are uh, trying to explain the iron and iron carbon uh, this are the we consider this is a binary phase diagram and from the graph we can see that that this axis composition of the carbon weight percentage of the carbon and this axis represents the temperature. So, uh, steel is most widely uh, used engineering uh, materials. So, here see that this is the alpha phase the single phase structure and it is having some certain limit the solubility limit that means what is the maximum carbon percentage will be there in the alpha phase usually 0 point it is a very low 0 0.02 percentage of the carbon is the uh, can dissolve and making the single phase of alpha structure alpha ferrite. So, uh, similarly here is the austenitic phase the gamma phase we can say we can say like that, but here you can see that from austenitic phase to another phase mixture from here to here it actually changes this is the transformation line from austenitic phase to some other phase or some other phase mixture or so all this transformation line if you see the transformation temperature actually changes and it is changes with respect to the composition then we the weight percentage of the carbon and there is other phase also it can create some kind of the structure that is called this is here parallel structure it can form and parallel itself is a mixture of the the alpha plus beta that means ferrite plus cementite both mixture of uh, parallel uh, structure we can we, we can observe. So, I mean to say that to just to understanding that this phase diagram, but here we are not talking about the how long how much time it is taking transformation from one phase to another phase that already explained already mentioned that says the transformation or equilibrium condition and that to understand the equilibrium condition we are assuming 
this is a infinitely slow process and based on that we are getting only the information of the different phases from the phase diagram along with the composition and with respect to a different temperature. Now, if we go into details uh, that much, so we will get the uh, completely details about the uh, phase diagram and associated with this thing. Here we can see the iron iron convert actual phase diagram this uh, have taken from the particular references just to understand what are the different phases are there. Here we can see that uh, this uh, weight percentage of the carbon and here you can see the weight percentage of carbon is 6.67. 6.67 weight percentage of the carbon are there that means maximum solubility we are showing here in the, in the iron uh, for carbon it is 6.67 weight percentage and between that within that solubility limit of the carbon there are so many different phases are there and that is with respect to temperature. The first one example is that normally if it is a 2 percent is the one is the this is the one boundary below 2 percent is carbon that is usually known as the steel that means carbon percent dissolved in iron less than 2 percent that is understand that is the steel and beyond 2 percent to 6.67 we can say this category is as a cast iron. So, that means we can simply looking into in, in this uh, the representation as a binary diagram that means iron and carbon and if carbon percentage is between 2 to 6.6 percent within iron then usually we know this as a this is called as a cast iron and if it is the carbon percentage below the 2 percent then it is known as the steel. So, there are different phases are also there in the steel for example, here is the austenitic phase there and here the liquid phase if you see the liquid phase uh, is the, the transformation temperature from liquid phase to some other phase phases or phase mixture this is actually varying with respect to the composition. So, here this is the temperature and but here this is the temperature that is also existent in the form of a liquid. So, that means with respect to the composition the transformation temperature actually varying here and that is obvious from this diagram. So, steel overall cast iron and within the steel we can see that uh, this is the ferrite alpha ferrite you can see this is the domain for the alpha ferrite and having certain maximum limitation this thing right. Now, here when this particular composition fixed composition it is the carbon percentage here it is mentioned as 0 0.83 percent sometimes we can say 0 0.77 weight percent of the carbon uh, in iron that creates the structure of the and low temperature below the uh, I think 720 degree centigrade. So, this is the degree centigrade 720 degree centigrade below that. So, this indicates the parallel structure. So, basically parallel structure when you taking this is a parallel structure this parallel structure it is a mixture of uh, actually some ferrite plus cementite. So, uh, in the different way the it structure the uh, lamellar form they can uh, mix they can create one kind of the phase mixture the ferrite plus cementite and but this parallel structures particularly we can say 0 0.77 weight percentage of carbon or sometimes it mentioned as 0 0.83 weight percentage of the carbon that is the structure of a parallelite. And accordingly, but ferrite we can define the carbon percentage equal to 0 0.028 percentage of the carbon and cementite we can see that percentage is 6.67 waste so waste percentage of carbon. So, this is the reference line for the cementite maximum solubility of the carbon here and the reference of the alpha ferrite here and in between there are different composition can vary in between. So, now this is the one information and other other information we can get this is the uh, austenitic phase and of course, austenitic phase is the solid state, but then this is the liquid phase and there is a delta iron. So, uh, that is also the delta iron it is a it is a having limited solubility of the carbon up to this point uh, of course, it is more than the ferrite structure, but delta is the one single phase exists in a, we can observe from this diagram. So, austenitic phase ferrite delta iron cementite these all are the single phase structure in this thing and remaining structure at the either in the liquid phase or mixture of the liquid and some one solid phase or mixture of the two different solid phases exist throughout this diagram. So, I mean to say that uh, there are uh, this information that at what temperature what kind of the phase mixture or is there any existence of the single phase structure or not all information we can get uh, from this uh, phase diagram equilibrium phase diagram and just for an example I have shown you in case of the iron iron carb carbide phase diagram we get this information and this will be useful to understand the different structures at as a as a different temperature of course, 
uh, with respect to the composition also. Now, there is another phase diagram that is called the TTT diagram, time temperature transformation diagram. diagram. So, time temperature in the particular sequence, first T for time, second T for temperature and third T for transformation diagram. And this is true for uh, 0 points, we are showing here 0 0.65 weight percentage of the carbon steel. And here uh, this composition is fixed, then x axis represents the transformation time and that is normally using a logarithm scale and y axis represents the temperature of the transformation. So, with this the, it means that this is different from the equilibrium phase diagram because that there it was not the time scale was not there, but here the transformation that means we get some understanding that how, how much time it takes from transformation from one phase to another phase. That information we will be getting in this diagram, but thing is that the transformation all this information, but transformation occurs at constant temperature. So, here the constant temperature transformation will be getting constant temperature uh, T is equal to constant at this particular constant temperature, what are the um, or a fixed composition, how much time it takes from one phase to another phase. So, to do that, to understand that first we draw, we can draw this is the transformation line, transformation starts for this particular carbon 6 point, uh, 0 0.65 percentage of the carbon steel for this com fixed composition, this one first line is representing the, this is the transformation starts and the second solid line that is represents the transformation ends. So, this solid lines is basically transformation ends. Now, you can see that transformation starts and transformation ends here from this diagram we can understand that the starting the duration that means uh, transformation at particular constant temperature uh, that is represented by the, the uh, horizontal line uh, parallel to the x axis. So, any uh, this is any any these are the transformation uh, at the constant temperature line here in this diagram. So, then the first point indicates the transformation start at this particular temperature and second point indicates the transformation ends. So, that means one phase to another phase transformation occurs. But uh, in this case we can see the transformation starting and ending that means duration between starting temperature at starting time and ending time that duration are different. So, we go beyond because that is in the logarithm scale. So, at the close to the uh, uh, lower time side that means this side close to that uh, this side. So, here the the uh, the transformation times is less, but away from this thing any transformation takes a large time because that is in the logarithm scale, time scale is in logarithm scale. So, transformation time becomes very high. So, I mean to say that this is the transformation time and this transformation time are not same and because the we representing the x axis in the logarithm scale. Now, what information we are getting from here? So, initially the austenitic stable uh, structure below this transformation. So, all phases are in austenitic phase in this diagram. Now, austenitic there are different trans at different temperature we can get the different kind of the phase. For example, over this range of the temperature here to here we are getting the uh, parallelite structure and that uh, any 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 transformation line if we follow and uh, at constant temperature. Similarly, over the this uh, over this temperature range we are getting the binite structure. So, binary structure is around starting from the around uh, 552 in between around 300 degree centigrade. In between we are getting the binary structure at in between that any constant temperature transformation will be getting the binary structure, but their uh, morphology will be different depending upon that what temperature the transformation occurs. So, uh, similarly at the low temperature phase we can see that we can, we can expect the low temperature we are getting the martensitic structure. Now, in some point of time the, the transformation may happen, so the mixture of the two different phases may be martensitic phase plus binite phase also depending upon the at what constant temperature the transformation occurs. So, here basically we are getting the information of that different uh, phases transformation from one phase to another phase and it constant temperature uh, at particular constant temperature transformation happening and what are the time taken for this particular transformation at particular temperature that information we are getting from the TTT diagram. So, I am not going into much details about the what are the different phases because that is not uh, in our scope, but rather 
just to uh, uh, that what information we can expect from the TT di diagram that we have we have tried to show here. Next CCT diagram of the carbon steel that means continuous cooling transformation diagram. So, what are the difference from the TTT diagram? So, here in the both x axis also represent the time and y axis represent the temperature, but difference is that we are representing here that we are fixing up uh, uh, we are just eliminating the effect of the, uh, the TTT diagram at constant temperature, but here a variable temperature is represented by the change of temperature with respect to change of time. So, this becomes constant that means, is basically one constant cooling rate d, d capital T by d small t the change of temperature with respect to change of time keeping as a fixed and then we are making the boundary the different uh, cooling rate we are plotting here just for example, this is the line dotted line this indicates the cooling rate equal to 8.3 degree centigrade per second. Similarly, this cooling rate indicates the 0 0.3 degree centigrade per second that means, change change of temperature with respect to change of time. So, that is why we superimpose the different cooling rate over here and then we just fix up the transformation line also. For example, this is the binite transform. So, this nose that is usually called the binite nose transformation line. This transformation line it is indicate the austenitic to ferrite between these two and this transformation line is basically austenitic to perlite structure. So, these are the different transformation line and over that we are uh, superimposing the different uh, cooling rate the constant values of the uh, change of temperature respect to change of time. That means, it takes care of the uh, if there is a variable temperature that means, most of the manufacturing process or uh, is associated with not as a does not happen at constant temperature rather there is a change of the temperature with respect to change in time. So, this will be more practically representative of the uh, different phases present by the CCT diagram continuous cooling transformation diagram. So, actually most of the heat treatment techniques uh, they are implemented uh, just looking into the information from the CCT diagram and this design is performed uh, from the CCT taking the information from the CCT diagram. So, here we, what we observe that these are the different transformation line and then we are superimposing different uh, cooling rate and then we can predict the different structure and this is represented in case of the uh, for example, this CCT diagram is for 4340 steel. So, they are this diagram nature of the diagram can be different in other kind of the alloy system binary alloy system, but this is specifically for the steel. Now, if it is the if we follow the cooling rate is beyond 8.3 degree centigrade per second more. So, then we can expect the super line will be the uh, other side of this curve. So, therefore, this is always create the martensitic structure. So, this information we are getting, but if the cooling rate is between 8.3 degree centigrade per second to 0 0.3 degree uh, centigrade per second in between these two, then we will be getting the mixture of the binite plus martensitic structure because it is passes through this binite nose. So, we are expecting the structure equal to martensitic plus binite. Similarly, we can get so for the low lower down the cooling rate, then we can get the mixture of between this zone we follow this particular cooling rate between these two. We can expect the martensitic plus ferrite plus binite structure. So, beyond that, this zone is indicated martensitic, ferrite, perlite, and binite structure. And finally, beyond if cooling rate is too slow, then we are getting mixture of the ferrite plus perlite structure. So, there is from this CCT diagram, uh, if we know that during the transformation what are the uh, typical cooling rate we are following, based on that we can say that the final microstructure is might be having uh, this uh, mixture of uh, this particular structure, either it is a martensitic structure or it is a mixture of the ferrite plus perlite structure. So, so this information uh, we are getting uh, from the CCT, CCT diagram of the carbon chain. So, all these three diagrams are actually useful. Uh, to get the presence of the different phases and under equilibrium condition what kind of the phases we are getting or if it is a uh, at constant temperature uh, uh, transformation occurs then what transforms we are getting from the TTT diagram or if we follow certain cooling rate also and beyond cooling rate or less than at a very high cooling rate or low cooling rate what kind of the structure we are getting that information we will be getting from the CCT diagram. 
Now I come to that back uh, this understanding of the importance of the three different uh, diagrams uh, in the associated with the phase transformation. Now we will try to look focus on the, the perspective of the Gibbs free energy changes in case of the uh, binary phase looking as a reference of the binary phase diagram. So, how to construct the binary phase diagram and, and that uh, before that uh, uh, how it is related to the Gibbs free energy we will try to take uh, just simple example. So, first we look into the simple phase diagram and of course, how equilibrium state of a particular alloy system can be obtained from the free energy curve at a given temperature uh, that will be discussed. Here just, uh, just I am just reviewing this part that Gibbs free energy, this information we are getting the Gibbs free energy curve that for a particular phase if you see that beyond the melting point temperature that means above melting point temperature the liquid phase is more stable and below the melting point temperature the solid phase is more stable. And of course, when this uh, system is more stable means it is having the minimum amount of the Gibbs free energy that is why if we follow the Gibbs free energy curve. So, above melting point temperature this uh, liquid is stable. So, liquid phase Gibbs free energy is lower as compared to the solid phase curve. Similarly, beyond below the melting point temperature here the solid phase gives free energy curve for the solid phase is lower as compared to the liquid phase. So, the, it means that the gives free energy for the solid phase is lower means it is the solid phase is uh, stable uh, in this particular below the melting point temperature. But at particular melting point temperature both the gives free energy for the solid and liquid phase both are same it means that at this particular point they are in equilibrium and it may happen so. Uh, instead of the solid and liquid phase may be two different solid phases or two different phases when they are transforming from one phase to another phase. So, exactly at transformation temperature they might be they will be must be equilibrium or uh, other we can say that Gibbs free energy for at the transformation temperature will be the same. So, this information we are getting from the Gibbs free energy and we will using this understanding we will try to explain the in the binary phases what we can construct the uh, binary phase diagram. Now, we take an example of the simple phase diagram assuming that A and B components are completely miscible in both solid and liquid state both they are solid liquids are completely they can mix with respect to each other at any ratio or at any composition and therefore, both are and assuming both are ideal solution we are assuming these two. Based on that we can see that uh, this is the composition A and composition B. So, composition A if 100 percent A and in between A and B it is a mixture of A and B. Now, at melting point temperature A of or melting point temperature of B composition in the both the cases the Gibbs free energy for the solid and Gibbs free energy for the liquid phase are will be the same. So, here we have written as a Gs equal to Gl at melting point temperature A and melting point temperature B. Now, Assuming that one particular temperature say T 1 temperature which is above the melting point temperature of the A and melting point temperature of the B, but in this case the melting point temperature of A is more than melting point temperature of B you have we are assuming that and T 1 temperature one particular temperature consider which is above the melting point temperature A it is definitely also the melting above the melting point temperature of the B. So, it means that and the in this in this particular temperature all are in a liquid phase and then liquid phase is more stable at a temperature T1 because this temperature T1 is above the melting point temperature of the both the components A and B. So, that is why we can construct the Gibbs energy curve is like that. So, liquid phase is more stable. So, its curvature will be low lower side because at, at particular temperature T1 and solid phase for the solid phase phase diagram it will be like this above the above the liquid phase diagram. So, these are the typical uh, Gibbs free energy curve uh, associated at a particular temperature T 1. Now, it is also true intermediate because at intermediate composition of any any composition in between A and B. So, at any point if we consider the any point this is also true because at any point T 1 temperature is always in the above the liquid uh, it is the uh, liquid temp uh, melting temperature of or A in this case is the highest as compared to the B. So, even it is above the melting point temperature therefore, at any intermediate composition always liquid phase will always be the stable. So, that means liquid we can draw the Gibbs energy it will be the lower side with the, uh, the high curvature and the lower side it will be there as compared to the solid phase. 
Now suppose temperature is decreasing and uh, some temperature is decreasing and in that case we can observe that G the liquid Gibbs energy for A and B both in case the liquid phase that will increase more rapidly that is obvious also here the if you look into the right hand side this figure uh, G so here the slope is more uh, for the liquid phase. So therefore in this case liquid phase the slope is more means the it is a more rapidly decreasing or uh, increasing in case of the liquid phase for the reduction in the temperature T. Now at particular temperature T m melting point temperature of the A melting point temperature of the A which is T m here T melting point temperature of A A is actually greater than melting point temperature of B. So therefore in this case so once exactly melting point temperature both solid and, and A also so this side at melting because like a hundred percent A so it is melting point temperature A so at this point both liquid phase and solid phase will be in equilibrium. So there this temperature will be the same. So here we are starting from the same point but uh, at melting point temperature which is melting point temperature above B phase. So therefore in the in liquid phase will be more stable here. So liquid still is lower side but solid is the uh, solid phase for the Gibbs energy for the solid phase is the upper side. Now this way we can construct it. Now similar kind of things we can apply. Suppose now next T2 temperature, T2 temperature is basically intermediate temperature of the Tm A and Tm B. So melting point temperature A and B between these two. So free energy curve will be constructed like that uh, uh, in that case because it is the above melting point temperature of the B. So above melting point temperature B, so towards the, towards the uh, composition B here the liquid phase is more stable that solid phase. But since the melting point te T2 temperature is less than melting point temperature of A, so solid phase is more stable towards A than the liquid phase. So therefore this is the, th this is the solid phase curve uh, towards A because this is a more stable and this is the liquid phase curve. So this is the liquid phase is this one overlapping but solid phase is uh, here solid phase is not stable but liquid solid phase is stable in the towards the A side towards the A. So once you draw this S and Gibbs energy for the S and L curve for uh, uh, for the uh, for this particular composition uh, um, here we can see the alloy A and B between A and B point here the solid phase is more stable and between C and B this is the liquid phase in equilibrium. So here solid phase is equilibrium and liquid phase is equilibrium but in between B C the equilibrium consists of the mixture of the solid and the liquid phase and of course any intermediate composition at the point between B and C they will be in equilibrium but that equilibrium phases will be the in the mixture of the solid and the liquid phases. Now next temperature is the lowering the temperature further that would is to the melting point temperature of the B. Melting point temperature of the B means that here the in the composition B is the 100 percent B at this at this point indicates the 100 percent of B. So therefore melting at this particular point uh, uh, that com uh, as per composition of the uh, B here though here solid and liquid phase both will be in the equilibrium conditions. So we start one particular point but the uh, towards A the solid phase will be the more stable because melting point temperature B is this one and uh, even the uh, intermediate composition or when goes towards the uh, A because A here melting point temperature of A is less than that of the melting point temperature of B. So therefore in this particular temperature uh, any composition their solid phase is more stable than with respect to the liquid phase. So you can draw the scarp in this way. So here liquid and solid phase. Now here we can see that in between the T2 and Tm G2 Gl continues to rise because to faster then Gs slope will be different. So points Bc moves right side and meet at the point D. So here this point Bc in between these two is basically try to move further reduction of the temperature when it is close to the melting point temperature. So it meet at point D and because at point D the liquid and solid phase of uh, here you can see the 100 percent of uh, D uh, is there 100 percent of D. So therefore uh, in, in, in uh, 100 percent of B is there. So therefore the 
uh, the liquid phase and uh, solid phase for the composition B will be the in equilibrium. So, that is we start this particular point. Now, if it is one next further reduction of the temperature T3 which is uh, lower than the melting point temperature of the B also in that case definitely lower than the melting point temperature B the here solid phase will always be in equilibrium and liquid phase but there some must be some gap is there. So, this is the solid phase uh, G curve and this is the liquid phase G curve. Now, if we superimpose all these things in between these two uh, that uh, composition versus temperature. So, we can construct one temperature T1, T1 is this indicating this T1 is above the melting point temperature of both A and B, but at melting point temperature both uh, A uh, this um, liquid and solid phase will be in equilibrium. Here the melting point temperature of B solid and liquid phase will be in equilibrium, but it is a uh, above you can draw the solidus temperature in, in this here and the um, solidus temperature is like that. So, below is the solid phase will be in equilibrium and liquid as temperature is there above which the liquid phase will be in an equilibrium. So, it is liquid phase the solid phase, but in between solid and liquid phase will be in equilibrium. So, that just is superimposing the Gibbs free energy curve and here we can see that uh, different point and here uh, that uh, x axis represents the composition and y axis represents the temperature. So, the very simple way we can see that uh, that uh, for the binary phase uh, cyst alloy system, we can draw the phase diagram. The simple way, just looking into the their uh, the nature of the Gibbs free energy uh, curve. So once we draw these things, and from there we can we can say that uh, this at particular temperature T3 indicating that the lower the lower than the melting point temperature of B, and T2 some intermediate temperature of the melting point temperature between A and B. So at T2 temperature. Uh, uh, some composition particular composition between B and C we already mentioned between B and C it is a mixture of the solid and liquid and there will be an equilibrium between the point B and C at temperature T2. So, we can super input T1, T2 and T3, TMA and TMB all different different temperature if you can draw the phase uh, Gibbs free energy curve and superimpose in with respect to the temperature and composition then we can construct this particular phase diagram. Now, and in sometimes binary phase diagram, it is also we, we try to understand the what is the degrees of freedom that means the, this is a that uh, flexibility is there such that intensive variables for example, temperature, pressure, x a, x b one particular system that can be varied independently while still maintaining the equilibrium. So, that how much variable or what is the number of sub variables can be uh, changes or independently to maintain the equilibrium that kind of information will be getting thus just looking into the for a particular system what is the degrees of freedom of the system. So, therefore, suppose one system contains the uh, C components and P phases. So, suppose C components are there and P phases are there, they are in equilibrium. So, therefore, the number of degrees of freedom F can be represented like the P plus F equal to C by C plus 2. So, this is the expression. So, number of phases and uh, how many components are there and what is the degrees of freedom F this is the relation. Now, if we if assume that pressure is constant then uh, one uh, this 2 is we consider 2 then one we fixing up at constant pressure then further reduction is because C plus 1 P plus F equal to C plus 1 1 1. Uh, constant uh, can be imposed that there is a reduction of the one constant in this case. Now, we can take an example also to understand this thing for example, we take the binary alloy system binary alloy system there are two compositions are there. So, that is a C equal to 2. Now, if C equal to 2 for binary alloy therefore, C put P plus F equal to 3, but at constant pressure that means, pressure is we are not considering pressure as a variable here. Now, suppose in the binary system two com, uh, components are there, but suppose there is existence the one phase. If there is one phase F equal to 1 then P equal to 2, P equal to 2 means that means degrees of freedom equal to uh, uh, sorry F equal to 2 it means that degrees of freedom equal to 2. So, degrees of freedom uh, 2 means it interpretation is the, like that the temperature and one composition can be varied independently to maintain the equilibrium 
conditions uh, of this particular system. So, that means equilibrium condition may exist at the, uh, the variable temperature and composition also. Now, binary system, but two phase, two phase region means P equal to 2 and binary system C equal to 2. So, in that case we can estimate that F equal to 1, but of course, here pressure is a constant. Now, if F equal to 1 means there is a only one degrees of freedom, one variable we can change independently to maintain the equilibrium of the system. So, here normally temperature we can consider can be varied independently, but composition remains fixed because in the binary phase diagram P equal to uh, two phase zone. So, P equal to two phase zone. So, two phase zone the only one degrees of freedom means that we can change the uh, temperature at the different temperature and the particular fixed composition the, the system can be in equilibrium condition. Now, if three phases phases are equilibrium, so P equal to 3, then what happens? Uh, then in that case F becomes 0, that means we do not have the any option to vary any independent variable to maintain the equilibrium condition. So, it, it, it creates the equilibrium condition one particular point. So, uh, that is one particular temperature or pressure is already fixed one particular composition and P uh, pressure is already constant. So, that particular temperature and composition then equilibrium exists only. So, that means we do not have it means that this is a freedom 0 that means we do not have any other uh, very uh, independent variable such that we can vary to maintain the equilibrium that is no not uh, not like that. So, therefore, that fixed point is sometimes called as the eutectic reaction and peritectic reaction or peritectic eutectic temperature or peritectic temperature associated with any kind of the equilibrium phase diagram we can identify this point. So, that means that the reaction occurs at this particular temperature at this particular composition only. So, these are the simple interpretation of the binary uh, the uh, Gibbs phase rule. This is all this phase rule the equations is basically known as the Gibbs phase rule and from there we can understand the what are the degrees of freedom uh, associated with this particular system. Now, we will shift to the next topic that is the, the influence of the interfaces on equilibrium. So, uh, interfaces on the equilibrium uh, we will try to understand in that way uh, bec uh, uh, for example, that free energy curve assuming the very perfect crystal without a, having any kind of the uh, defect crystal defect is not there and large amount of the materials is associated with this thing. So, therefore, in that case free energy curve will be uh, uh, is uh, different uh, as compared to when there is a presence of the any kind of the defect crystal defects uh, in a particular sample of the material. For example, if there is a crystal defect for example, uh, any kind of the dislocation any kind of the interface or grain boundary that is represented as a defect uh, in, a, uh, in a in a structure. So, presence of the defects actually enhances the increases the amount of the Gibbs free energy. So, therefore, the here you can see that this Gibbs free energy is raises the dislocation always dislocation do exist and raise the free energies associated with the uh, uh, in, in and when you uh, try to look into the uh, that actual microstructure as compared to the uh, very uh, perfect structure, uh, perfect crystal structure. Now, the perfect crystal structure and crystal structure, uh, crystal uh, structure with defects, but they are in that two different, these two different cases the Gibbs free energy curve will be different. So, therefore, minimum free energy or equilibrium state is definitely affected uh, in presence of the any kind of the interfaces or in presence of the any kind of the dislocation because these are considered as a defects. And why this is like that because any kind of the crystal defects uh, is associated with some amount of the energy associated with that that is why it actually changes the Gibbs free energy or their condition for the minimum amount of Gibbs free energy or equilibrium condition can change in presence of this kind of the defects. Now, out of this we will try to understand what are the influence of the interface as a defect uh, in the equilibrium and how it is influence the Gibbs energy, what we can link with the calculation of the Gibbs energy curve. 
Now, this interface is very actually important uh, at the early stage of the phase transformation because in the most of the cases the phase transformation from one phase to another phase when there is a formation of the new phases it creates in the process of the nucleation process. A nucleation process means it is the either it is the within the liquid phase there is a formation of the uh, solid phases gradually move uh, uh, develop uh, gradually grow in the solid phases or other way within another solid phases there is a formation of the nucleation. So, definitely nucleation when crea creation of the nucleus it is always associated with some uh, sort uh, associated with some kind of the interfaces interface formation nucleation. And from that point of view we can assume that suppose there is a alpha matrix and there is a formation of the very fine particle that is the different phases. So, alpha matrix is the one phase and there is another phase the beta phase and beta phase is the presence in the form of a particles. So, therefore, when it is form of the particles, uh, it is some uh, surrounded by uh, its uh, uh, certain size will be there and some interfaces will be there. So, that it can distinguish the two different phases also. So, uh, alpha phase we are assuming it is in atmospheric pressure and beta phase presence of the curvature of the beta phase will create some amount of the extra pressure. So, that that delta p change of the pressure due to the curvature effect at the alpha beta interface. So, we can say this is the uh, this is the this this interface in the between the alpha and beta phase that is the interface is created and this curvature effect create some kind of the extra pressure delta p. Now, if we assume the interfacial energy gamma uh, uh, and the particle radius is the r. So, this change of the pressure can be represented approximately calculated as the twice gamma by r. So, it is associated with the r the uh, radius of this particle and the uh, interfacial energy. Now, we understand the Gibbs free energy is the content of pressure and the volume term if you remember uh, that expression of the Gibbs free energy in that case is dg can be represented in terms of the minus s dt plus v dp and that derivation we have already discussed that is the one form of the estimation of the change of the Gibbs free energy is a with respect to the change in the temperature and change in the pressure. Now, if we assume that that it happens only that constant temperature then this is effect can be neglected. So, therefore, at constant temperature delta g the change of the Gibbs energy is associated with the change of pressure into V delta p into V. So, therefore, delta g gamma Gibbs energy change presence of the interface is the delta p represent the twice gamma by r v can be represented in form of the v m the different way because v m we are assuming this is the molar volume of the beta phase. So, therefore, delta g gamma equal to twice gamma by r into v m. Now, this free energy increase due to the interfacial energy is actually known as the capillary effect or, or Gibbs Thomson effect. So, this particular uh, uh, terminology we can use with uh, this capillary effect or Gibbs Thomson effect is basically you are considering the curvature effect of the in presence of the interface and in a, in a one phase uh, in a beta phase which is uh, create in the uh, alpha phase. Now, pressure difference is actually may be significant uh, uh, of a spherical, spherical particles and but it may be more uh, significant in case of the li um, between liquid and the solid phase, but within the solid phase its effect is it is uh, but less convenient is basically solid. So, solid phase is, uh, there is not much effect of the change of the pressure, but still it is having some importance also. Now, if we consider a system containing the two beta particles with the different perspective we are trying to look into that uh, this effect of the curvature also. Say uh, in a system beta particles are there one spherical interface of radius r creating and other is the other planar interface is there embedded in the alpha matrix. So, alpha matrix beta phase in the one planar interface where radius of curvature is equal to infinity and other cases one spherical interface is there for the beta phase over the alpha phase. Now, in that case also delta g gamma we can represent the molar free energy between the two particles. Now, assume the transfer of the small quantity of the from d n mole d n this is the very small quantity mole of beta phase from the large to the small particles. So, graphically we can represent like that. So, here this is the alpha phase and there is a presence of the beta particle and this beta 
phase is basically moving small amount of the beta phase is moving to the to the particle say small amount basically we can say the d n mole of beta is transferring to the particle. So, with this transformation we will try to look into what is the Gibbs free energy change in this case. So, the increase of the free energy of the system uh, is like that d g equal to change the Gibbs free energy what is the delta g Gibbs free energy change delta g gamma and corresponds to the this is the per mole and this is the d n mole. So, total d n into delta g gamma per mole into indicates the total in increase of the Gibbs free energy when the some small quantity transfer from beta to one uh, planar front to the, the particle phase. Therefore, surface area of the large particle remains the unchanged uh, in that case because very small quantity has been transferred. The in increase in the free energy is due to the increase in the interfacial area of the spherical particle. So, definitely we are assuming that here the particle of the spherical particle that the increase of the area will be dA. The energy because interfacial energy will be increasing if there is a change of the increasement of the surface area. So, therefore, we can say like that gamma is the interfacial energy per unit area and dA is the change in the uh, area with the addition of the dN amount mole to the particle B. So, therefore, change of the Gibbs energy dG can be represented like that also other way the gamma into dA. Now, two perspective 1 and 2 both the cases we can calculate the change of the Gibbs free energy in the different perspective make it equal from there we can find out delta G gamma equal to gamma into d A by d n from 1 and 2 and n equal to number of uh, d n mole. So, uh, n can be represented like that what is the volume because V m is the molar volume that volume divided by the molar volume. So, that is the indication of the n and area of this particle 4 pi r square. So, therefore, d A by d n we can calculate. So, d n d A by d n equal to d A by d r by d n by d r from there you can find 8 pi r or 4 pi r square by v m. So, finally, you can estimate the twice v m by r. Now, delta g gamma that gives free energy change with this we can estimate the gamma the um, interfacial energy twice v m by r. So, this expression is similar to what we have calculated due to the change of the pressure. Here you can see that here also we have calculated delta g gamma twice gamma by uh, twice gamma by v m. So, this we can see that this is the influence of the interfaces presence of the interfaces on the equilibrium that how the Gibbs free energy change in presence of the interfaces uh, in a structure. So, uh, this is this part is done. Now, next we will try to another subtopic associated with that that is the kinetics of the phase transformation. So, uh, kinetics of the phase transformation we can see that so far uh, we have discussed the we apply the thermo um, uh, thermodynamics principle also to understand the Gibbs free energy curve and here, but nowhere we are talking about that how much time it takes to change from one phase to another phase and uh, this Gibbs free energy change how much time it takes from one equilibrium to another equilibrium phase or basically to reach the equilibrium phase what is the time taken that kind of the information are not there even that is not able to answer from the classical thermodynamics the relations. So, therefore, how fast the process occurs that is basically known as the science of the kinetics. So, here we can represent the Gibbs free energy curve for a single atom is like that schematically we can represent this thing. So, suppose this is one uh, configuration of the atom. So, this is the one minimum amount of the Gibbs free energy this particular point this is the another Gibbs free energy uh, the minimum of the Gibbs free energy. But so, here transformation from G 1 to G 2 that means further minimization of the Gibbs free energy curve. So, G 2 is the more stable position than G 1 is the represents here. So, therefore, the difference between these two is the um, from state 1 to state 2 the Gibbs free energy change equal to delta G, but delta G is between this value to this value this is the delta G, but in between there might be having some meta stable state and it will always try to reach the further stable states lower free energy curve that is the nature of a uh, or that is the nature of a uh, one particular system will try to reach and that is explained in terms of the Gibbs free energy. So, therefore, G 1 and G 2 initial and the final free energy state therefore, driving force for the transformation is the Gibbs free energy change between these two states that is delta G equal to G 2 minus G 1, but however, once we reaching from 
G1 to G2 it is not directly it needs to cover the transition some kind of the activated state because it from here to here it has to overcome this energy barrier then it will try to reach this position G2 position. So, this sometimes known as the transition of the activated state is there uh, with the free energy delta G A. So, this is the but this free energy has to overcome this free energy is available, but this energy barriers need to overcome to reach the state 2. So, and this is the over and above the G 1 this free energy. So, sometimes delta G A can be characterized as the average energies associated with the large number of atoms and this is the can be taken as like the uh, some activation energy, but this thermal activation motion uh, activation energy is equivalent to the motion of an atom energy varies with the time. So, this value can be varies with respect to time and it is probabilistic in nature. So, occasionally the sufficient for the atom to reach the activated state. So, some amount of the so it is a thermal motion is there, but it is occasionally it try to reach overcome this particular energy barrier to reach the another stable state, but it is not very deterministic way we can say uh, this it reach exactly the overcome this barrier. So, that is the probabilistic way we can calculate. So, therefore, this energy barrier is sometimes known as the thermal activation process. So, that means, it is if thermally activated probably it can overcome this energy barrier to reach the another equilibrium state. So, this is represented like that. So, according to the kinetic theory the probability of atom reaching the activated state probability is the is uh, basically exponential minus delta G A by K T. So, therefore, K is the Boltzmann's constant and which is equal to R by N A, N A is the Avogadro's number R is the characteristic gas constant and we here delta G A represents the activation free energy barrier. Now, this is the probability, but the rate at which the transformation occurs depends on the frequency which the atom reaches the activated state. It actually depends on the frequency with which the atom reaches the activated state. But therefore, rate indirectly we can make is like that it is proportional to the exponential minus delta G A by K T. So, but we know that activation uh, the delta G A gives energy change is equal to minus delta H T delta A. So, with the activation and the thermally activated process, so delta G A can be the Gibbs free energy change can be equivalent to the enthalpy of the system. Okay, so, then enthalpy of the system or, or maybe I can say the change of the enthalpy of the system delta. So, therefore, here we can represent the state rate can also be proportional to the exponentially delta H A minus R T, but this is sign should be minus delta H by R T. So, this is kind of the known as the Arrhenius rate equation. So, therefore, we cannot uh, uh, this uh, this thing if we introduce some constant term that we can represent the rate at which at which the uh, transformation from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state it can be reached. So, this looking into the enthalpy or um, the uh, of the system we can to some extent uh, predict the uh, kinetics of the phase transformation. I think that is all uh, uh, for today and specifically uh, uh, this I, I just cover up uh, the whole aspect of the um, thermodynamic principle associated with the this uh, solidification processing and we have discussed uh, so many different aspects based on the thermodynamic principle, but, but mostly focus on the what a, every time we are looking into what a, we can calculate the Gibbs free energy change associated with the single component system and the binary solution also and at the same time we have tried to explain the effect of the pressure. Uh, associated with the phase transformation. So, these are the overall uh, theme associated with the uh, this particular module. Uh, uh, next time I will try to discuss the uh, some demonstration as well as the some example problem associated uh, with the theory what we have discussed so far. So, that is all for today. Thank you very much for your kind attention.